All right. Um, so my talk, as hopefully all of you know, is about building a baby JVM. And it's more like in utero JVM. It's not even a... Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll get into it. All right. So let, let me just jump right into it. Let me share my screen. I'll be jumping around from uh, slides to the terminal. Um, so if any of you have been in my talks, you know I don't really love slides, but I kind of had to do it for this in this case because we're all remote. Um, so I'm going to show you how to build a, uh, well, start to build a JVM. Um, so why would you do this? I don't know. Um, just outside of having some fun. Uh, I do not expect you to use anything. If, if you learn anything in this talk, I do not expect you to use any of it at work. Um, I think you could probably go your entire professional Java developer life without knowing any of this and be just fine. Um, but it is cool. And, you know, I'm assuming most of us got into this business just because, you know, we had fun in the beginning, right? And then we monetized. So this is in that spirit. So let's have some fun. All right. So the first thing about a JVM is class files. So can everybody see my terminal? Yep. Yep. Okay. All right. So I got nothing here. I got my uh, J J open JDK 11. Um, I'll explain why I did that in a second. So let's do a Let's do a little uh, test file, right? Public class test. I make any typos. Say something. Uh, public static int. Uh, I'm just making a uh, a dead simple dead simple class. All it does is mod two numbers and that's about it. So hopefully if I didn't make any typos, we can now compile it. I did not make any typos, right? So you end up with a class file. And so now let's, uh, well, let's, let's do, let's look at it with, uh, well, let me go back to my slides. So this is the file. Um, we compiled it, right? We did that step. Um, and we could do a MD5 on it. I'll explain why in a second. All right. Oh, it's actually a different SHA, um, but whatever, uh, it doesn't matter. Um, and then, so what we're gonna do is we're going to do a hack stump on the file and see what this, uh, what this file looks like. Okay, so, it's a bunch of binary code, right? And with some strings in here, right? So some of you uh, that know Java and know a little bit of the internals, you will probably recognize this, right? Um, it's like dead beef, but cafe babe, right? Um, the, all, the, all the Java class files start with uh, uh, this binary string. It's called magic. And we'll get into that a little bit later, right? Um, okay, so looking at hex dump is usually you don't do that unless you're um, doing something with binary files, um, which in our case we are because we're going to actually load this file or write a class loader. Um, but usually if you do anything with class files, you usually use the tool called Java P. Right. Uh, and so this will decompile the file and show some stuff. So here's the, the same MD5 checksum, right? Gives you the date, and then it gives you a bunch of other stuff, right? So minor version, major version, flags, this class, super class, all sorts of good stuff. Um, and then the most important thing after probably the version, so merger, major version 55 means that it's JDK 11. Um, so I went on Wikipedia and found all the versions, right? So 45 is 1.1. Uh, most of you, well, I don't know, most of you, a lot of you that are using Java are probably on 52. Um, 55 is the current uh, long-term support version. I think 17 or something is the next LTS. I'm not sure. I don't think it's 14 though. Um, um, so none of these are LTSs. That's why I'm not doing, not that this demo depends on any of this stuff, but 
Um, this is why I'm on 11. Okay. Um, and then we get to something called a constant pull. So the constant pull is probably one of the most important things. Well, not probably. It's definitely one of the most important things in uh, a class file. And that's where it keeps, well, all the constants, right? So um, from stuff like the file name to any string constants, any code segments, um, constructors. So anything that's um, like pointers and other stuff in the class file or in the constant pool rather. So this points to the third entry, right? And then the third entry points to the 14th entry, right? So it's some of it is self-referencing, right? And then we get to our methods. Okay, so we are going to recreate. So this is actually the, the bytecode and we'll get into that a little bit later. And this is the method signature in the, in, in, on the JVM. Um, uh, this, this is JVM's version of uh, taking an int and returning an int. And uh, so I should probably say that, a, that the JVM, at least the, uh, the open JDK is a stack machine. So the instructions are a stack. So just how you read this, this says load the first argument, uh, load the second argument. So, uh, right, so just so you guys remember, it just takes two ints and mods them together, right? That's it, and returns the result. So we've got loading the first argument. So this is, this is the, the remainder uh, method. So it takes the first argument, takes the second argument, uh, then I, IRM pops both arguments and takes the remainder. Uh, and then I return is, you know, just says return the, the integer, right? Which is the result of the, of the mod. So pretty simple, um, not much there. Um, this is the constructor of the class, right? Each class has a constructor. So that's what you're seeing here. Um, and we'll see in the constant pool, it's actually referencing this fifth entry. Um, okay. So Let's load this guy up. Let's, so the Java P did a lot of this work for us. Um, let's, I uh, oh, can't see my cursor, one second. Okay, so let's, uh, let's write our own class loader. Um, I'm gonna, oops, I'm going to cheat a little bit because I have some of this stuff here already. Um, so I'm not just, you know, doing this from memory. I have some notes. So, and we're going to do it in Python. Um, the language didn't matter, but I thought like maybe not everybody knows what, you know, Java, although um, that's not really, the, that used to not be the case, but it, it could be the case now, All right? So we're just going to, we're going to use Python because it's pretty close to pseudocode. So, we're going to import sys and we're going to import um, another another package called uh, binary ASCII um, and that's going to be useful later right so this just takes the first argument so I want to give it I want to call this give it a class and um, call this function, right? And this function is going to do the heavy lifting of actually uh, loading this class into memory and doing things with it, right? Um, so this is gonna be a binary file, right? We're gonna wanna open it. Um, uh, we wanna open it as read only. Uh, or we just call it data and start reading it. So um, we need some helper functions. So, uh -huh, let me, so we inspected it with Java P, right? Um, so now let's let's jump into the actual uh, class definitions. So uh, for this, we'll be using the JVM spec, right? So and this is how the so this is uh, chapter four. Um, so there's there's a bunch of like linking and calling conventions before that. Um, we're jumping straight to chapter four. And this is how a class file is laid out, right? So U4 means that this is a uh, four unsigned bytes, right? So that's the magic. That's the, the cafe, uh, cafe babe uh, hex that you saw. 
Then there's the minor version and the major version. We've seen those, right, in Java P. Uh, this is zero, this should be 55. And then we'll get to the constant pool. So, um, but first let me add a couple of utility functions because we'll be reading a lot of integers, right, um, or unsigned bytes. So uh, let me just add a couple of utilities. Percent. So we're reading some data. Uh, data. The byte order, so all the class files are in Big Indian or network byte order, um, not the, so I'm on an Intel machine, right? Um, not Little Indian. Okay, and then I'll, I'll, I'll write a couple more helper functions. Data one, right? So same thing for two. Just makes life a little easier. And four. Okay. Um, Do you want that right. the name be U three no. or U four? By the way. Oh, sorry, I was typing. I hate right. being that guy. <laughs> Yes. You forgot it closed. It worked, but it would have been weird. Um, okay, so the first thing we want to do, right, is we want to get the magic value. So we want the, the, the cafe baby hex, right? So that happens to be, so I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to parse that into an integer, right? I'm just going to read the first four bytes, right? That's the magic. Uh, then the minor version is, so here's the, let me zoom in a little bit. So the minor version is two bytes, and the major version is also two bytes. All right, so parse uh, u2. Right, uh, major is also two okay. bytes. You're going to need colons on your defs. Colons on my defs. u1 and u2. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so and let's let's print those guys out and um, well actually let's print out the constant pool and uh, constant pool count as well. So let's take that guy and the count is u two. So that means that a class file can have a uh, sixteen bits worth of uh, constants, which is like sixty five thousand something, sixty five thousand five hundred and thirty six. Um, constants. So that's, that's quite a bit of constants. Um, then if you scroll down a little, or if you look a little further down, right, like there's fields, right? So a class can have 65,536 fields and 65,536 methods, right? So you can have quite a bit of stuff. Um, usually you would never run into these limits practically, right? If you're actually writing the code yourself by hand. Um, no matter how bad you are at this. <laughs> uh, how many years you write it for? Yeah, okay. So let's, let's print this out. Um, let's, let's print uh, magic. Major. Magic, minor, major, and oh, and I forgot the constant pool, of course. And the constant pool. Just call this CP count. All right, now let's see what we got. Close friends on the print. Load. Nope. Looks like you need another close friends on the print call. Oh, thank you. Yeah, there we go. Um, the comments are a little weird, but uh, 
there we go. There's the, the cafe, right? There's the minor version, the major version, and the constant pool count, right? So which should be the same as what we're looking at here, right? Um, so these guys, uh, the, the constant, uh, about the constant and the constant pool count. So we have uh, one through 14 entries, right? And the constant pool count here is 15. Uh, if we look at the spec, uh, the, the constant pool info is actually the constant pool count minus one. So it's correct. Okay, so let's parse the constant pool. Um, OCP. Uh, right, okay. Um, and let's call that here. Okay, so what does the constant pool look like? So the constant pool is let's call that on the constant pool structure, right? So it's just a tag and a name index, right? And the name index is, you can see here, uh, it must be a valid index in the constant pool table. Uh, let me move the, the video here, right? Um, and on the constant pool entry, that is a constant uh, UTF info structure representing valid binary class interface. So we'll see what that is all about uh, in the Java P command, right? So you've got, you know, there's different type of things you can have. You can have a method, a class, UTF-8, which is the most popular one, and the name and type. And name and type are just entries, uh, and method ref too, are just other entries into the constant pool, right? So for instance, the method ref is three, right? So it's pointing to the class. Uh, and 12 is, you know, another name and type, right? So four and five, and then four is the constructor, and five is the, um, the actual initialization, right? So uh, let's, let's parse this, parse this guy. Second. So, lost my mouse. Okay, here we go. All right. So, uh, we want to loop through this. Oh, um, actually, want to send it the constant, like, um, the count. So, when we parse this, right, we need the constant pool count minus one, right? Just like the spec says. So here now with for loop from, and then what do we got? We got a bunch of these guys, right? So we got a tag and we've got a name index. And that's our that's our constant um, constant pool structure. Uh, right here. Uh, CP info. Tag and an uh, sorry uh, tag and an array of uh, bytes. Um, so we'll get into that in a second. So let's parse it. Let's parse u one. Um, there you go. And then right. And then so then we need a table, right? So all of these. Uh, infos are different depending on the tag, right? So you have a bunch of these tags, right? And they're different sizes. So in this case, uh, you know, some stuff is uh, well-defined in terms of bytes, like a float is four, right? But a UTF-8 um, is, there's a tag for it, but also then you have to go and figure out, well, how long it is. Um, so let me quickly copy and paste that code. Um, since it's laborious to type out. Okay. Since I have all this, if you can imagine I've actually done this before. Uh, all right, let's copy it over. Be 
find these guys. Okay. So these are the different tags uh, based on the byte values, right? So seven is constant class, for instance, right? And UTF-8 is one. And then based on the tags themselves, um, they have different byte lengths. Right. Okay, so, so we have a tag. Um, then we're going to have a tag name, um, which is going to be our uh, const pool. Oh, that didn't work. Const pool tags. And I'll look it up. And that will be our tag. And then based on the tag name, we're going to have a big structure that's going to figure out um, what exactly it is that we're, that we're doing here. Um, okay, so let's get the, right, so we got the name, and then we're gonna say, okay, if tag name is, oh, it's constant. Constant UTF-8, right? We're gonna get its length. We need to know, so this is all the string stuff, right? And the length is a U2. We're going to get the actual data and um, we should probably store this stuff. Somewhere. So we're going to store the list, right? And we're going to say C pool, CP. CP append, right? And we're going to say uh, tag name, tag name. Uh, length. Not really care about the length. Uh, data. UTF-8. And so that's how we parse the um, the constant uh, the UTF data. And then we're gonna support strings, right? So if our tag name is a string. Um, then we're going to have a string index equals and append Um, then we need to parse the name and type, right? Which is going to be very similar. Right. Um, so this would be a name index, uh, descriptor index. and add it to the constant pool. And just a couple more. Um, so we're gonna parse the methods and the fields.
and these are the same. So methods and fields um, look the same from my binary perspective, um, right? So And then we're going to do a class index. So we don't need to do all of them, but we kind of have to do these ones because they're, um, they're sort of fundamental to any class. And otherwise, if it's if it's um, something else, right? We're just going to um, we're just going to do our best, um, which means that we'll just read the tag. Um, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, data read uh, constant. Cool values. Uh, just save it. If we hit something, we don't know. And then at the end of that, we're going to return the uh, return the constant pool. Right. And uh, then we're going to print what we have. And hopefully, if everything. Uh, Don't you need to outdent the return CP there? Huh? Sorry, what? Isn't the return CP in your loop? Oh, is it? Uh, sorry. Uh, it might have been. Yep, it was. Thank you. It would have been a very quick parse job then. Um, <laughs> Uh, okay, so now we've got our constant pool, uh, and let's uh, let's print it out. Uh, let's, let's do the ugly print first and see what we get. Uh, make sure this actually worked. Oop. Syntax error. And another one. There we go. All right. So now let's let's print it out a little bit neater. Um, right. So uh, this should start looking a little bit like Java P, right? Um, Indeed, the ugly version. Um, oh, we should probably also um, print out the index because in the constant pool, that's important, right? Mm -hmm. So index and the constant. 
Okay, so this is our constant pool, right? So you should see that it looks um, very familiar or very similar to this, right? Method ref, class, et cetera, right? Um, so it, it does look the same, um, at least on our cursory observation, right? Just laid out a little differently. But now we have our constant pool, right? So everything that, well, like all these constants in the pool are now loaded into memory, right? Um, okay, well, what else is there, right? After we're done with the constant pool, there are, there are a couple other things. There are, um, and I'm gonna kind of cheat and just skip through those um, because I already have them coded, right? So we've got, we've got interfaces. In this case, we don't have any interfaces. We've got fields, right? Um, we've got methods and we've got attributes, right? And all of them are basically parsed the exact same way. Um, so you don't have to, you know, watch me type it out. I will just uh, copy it from an existing um, file. But I wanted you to see that it's not like magic. You could just, you know, fairly straightforwardly uh, parse it, right? So now if we run our class loader, right? Um, so you store it, get the same thing, right? Um, same thing you've seen before, right? Except now we've got more stuff, right? So there's our constant pool. Now we've got our access flags, um, which I won't go into. Um, but you know, there's basically, you know, is this a public method? Is it not, um, right? Our interfaces, not surprisingly, we have zero interfaces. Fields, not surprisingly, we have zero fields, but we have two methods, right? One of them is the constructor, and the other one of them is the actual uh, remainder method, right? And same thing, we've got access flags, um, name index. So these things all point back to the constant pool. So um, like if you wanted to see like, oh, what's name index? Well, you go look at the eight, right? And it's saying, oh, okay, this is the, this is the signature, right? Um, you go to the descriptor index, right? And it says, okay, this is a source file, um, and et cetera, et cetera. So the actual bytecode, so where's that? Um, so the bytecode is in these attributes. Um, so if you go into the JVM spec, right, and you look at uh, method info, so you see how there's these attribute count and attributes. Uh, the attribute info um, will have information about like constants and the info is the actual, um, these are the actual bytecodes. So some of these are talking about like stack length, right? So like, um, and program length, right? So you see that there's, uh, if you look at here, right? You see how there's stack equals two, locals equals two, and the arc size is two, right? Um, if you go, if you go here, you'll actually see this stuff. Um, and then we get to our bytecode, right? So 26. Um, so you'd have to go into the JVM spec to see what 26 is. Uh, and that is I load. Uh, so I load, right? Um, and what that does is load int from a local variable, right? Which is one of our arguments. Um, so that's 26, right? 27 is I load one. Right, which is the, the second command um, and then, or the, the second argument to the method, right? And then if you look at 112, right? In our case, it's uh, IREM. Let's go back up. IREM 112, right? And then I return is 172, right? So that lives right here. Right. And so this is basically effectively our program. Um, um, unfortunately, I'm out of time. Uh, so, but using this, you could interrogate a class, see the, see the bytecode and actually start implementing a stack machine, right? Um, you could go after these variables, right? And um, when you're running the code and do the operations. Um, you would just, well, in, in this primitive case, you just need a stack and to actually do the, the operations and the, um, do the computation on the, in the method. Um, okay, let me go back.
to my slides. Yeah, so there's real JVMs out there in all sorts of different languages. Um, there's one in JavaScript and Lua and Java and Rust, all sorts of languages. Um, so you should check them out. Um, right. 